should be topic number four tonight. Uh, probably our final topic tonight. Be topic number four is Burkina Faso and Mali may become one country in our lifetime. Are we in an African spring? This came with a link taking us to Twitter. It's taking us to a tweet from African Stream saying Treori on Pan-African Federation. Caption says the armies of Burkina Faso and Mali are as good as one. That's according to uh, Burkina Bay President Ibrahim Treore, who's been sharing some details on uh, old Gadugo, I guess is the word, and Bamako's Pan-African Federation. He also revealed that economic ties were being strengthened and that the Federation was open to newcomers with Guinea already moving closer, while regional body ECOWAS was balked, also has balked at the idea of such a union. Traore here puts that it's what young people all over the region are calling for. Earlier this year, crowds walked 860 kilometers on foot between Bamako and Ogadugu to express their support for the Burkina Mali Federation. Traore also makes clear that it's only by uniting that the struggle against outside domination can be overcome. Let us know down below if you'd be up for your country joining. So this comes with a video. We'll watch it twice, and then we'll talk about it. Bien sûr, nous, nous avons lancé l'idée, d'ailleurs, qui n'est pas bien appréciée par certains de la... Voilà, vous avez dû voir des, des images dans certaines conférences où ils ne sont pas d'accord qu'on puisse fédérer. Eh bien, il faut que les gens comprennent que en rang dispersé, ça sera difficile. On va se battre, mais il faut que l'Afrique arrive à s'unir. Et plus on s'unit, plus on, a, on est efficace. Nous, nous sommes en train d'évaluer actuellement beaucoup de choses avec le Mali, surtout sur le domaine économique. Sur le côté défense, déjà, on a des accords, hein, ça c'est déjà scellé. Les Maliens viennent chez nous, c'est vraiment, c'est la même armée. On fait tout ensemble, on s'entraîne ensemble, on combat ensemble. Terrestre, aérien, tout se passe bien. Et voilà, donc le volet économique aussi, on est en train de réfléchir. On a beaucoup de flux d'échanges commerciaux. Comment renforcer, comment... Voilà, il y a beaucoup de paramètres à prendre en compte. Et voilà, on n'exclut pas qu'un État, notre État vienne fédérer avec nous. Donc le processus est en cours. Voilà, et plutôt ça va venir mieux, c'est... Donc s'il y a d'autres États qui sont intéressés, c'est sûr qu'on va aller vers la Guinée. Et s'il y a d'autres États intéressés, qu'on puisse s'unir. C'est ce que la jeunesse demande. Bien sûr, nous, nous avons lancé l'idée, d'ailleurs qui n'est pas bien appréciée par certains de la CDO. Là, vous avez dû voir des, des images dans certaines conférences où ils ne sont pas d'accord qu'on puisse fédérer. Et ben, il faut que les gens comprennent qu'en rang dispersé, ça sera difficile. On va se battre, mais il faut que l'Afrique arrive à s'unir. Et plus on s'unit, plus on, a, on est efficace. Nous, nous sommes en train d'évaluer actuellement beaucoup de choses avec le Mali, surtout sur le domaine économique. Sur le côté défense, déjà, on a des accords, hein, ça c'est déjà scellé. Les Maliens viennent chez nous, c'est vraiment, c'est la même armée. On fait tout ensemble, on s'entraîne ensemble, on combat ensemble. Terrestre, aérien, tout se passe bien. Et voilà, donc le volet économique aussi, on est en train de réfléchir. On a beaucoup de flux d'échanges commerciaux. Comment renforcer, comment... Voilà, il y a beaucoup de paramètres à prendre en compte. Et voilà, on n'exclut pas qu'un État, autre État vienne fédérer avec nous. Hein. Donc le processus est en cours. Voilà, et plutôt ça va venir mieux, c'est... Donc s'il y a d'autres États qui sont intéressés, c'est sûr qu'on va aller vers la Guinée. Et s'il y a d'autres États intéressés, qu'on puisse s'unir. C'est ce que la jeunesse demande. Okay, so I think everyone uh, should have been able to catch that. Um, I think everyone should be able to catch that. So uh, should have been talking number four, Burkina Faso and Mali may become one country in our lifetime. Are we in an African spring? Uh, let me mix it up. 
Uh, Brother Bakari, what say you to what you just read? Read. Uh, <clears throat> Probably Vu Francais. See, I could understand him if he had said that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. But Kenan Faso and I read him moving toward Guinea. That's great. And he said that's what the young people want. But that's the same thing I say about here. I really think a lot of the things that we see here, what we want, is the young people here that uh, uh, that I think is going to bring it together just for me having children in a certain age range. I see how they date uh, Black people from all around the world. They, they hang out together and they see themselves as the same. The most of this we indigenous or we ain't African is not coming from that age range, 20, 25 years old, 30 years old, maybe on YouTube, but I'm talking about out here in real life. You really don't see a lot of the young people doing that. They are not concerned about that. I see them coming together. So when he said the young people, that's what they want. And it also make me think about my friends from Nigeria and my friends from uh, Ghana and my friends from Cameroon who said, that the young people is fighting to get rid of tribes in those countries. And they have elders, excuse me, who is agreeing with them saying, get rid of the tribes so they can all be one people. And that's a, uh, that's a great thing because think about it, Cameroon and Nigeria, this is basically the same thing, man. Yoruba, <laughs> you want to say a tribe, Yoruba, Igbo, all that right there in Cameroon, just like in uh, just like in Nigeria. So all these tribes, it's it's nonsense. So the young people need to come together and overthrow those cricket as governments in those countries where they can. Unfortunately for us over here, we don't have that power uh, right now uh, to overthrow this government here, but we are in position where we can't have power. We just have to create it. But that's a wonderful thing that uh, Bikini Faso and Mali is doing. That's that that's great. And they say they're going to move to our Guinea. I hope Guinea is a part. I hope every West African country becomes a part and they can show then all of Black Africa come together and kick them nasty, stinking ass Arabs off the continent. And we just take our land back on that i hear the mic appreciate that bakari uh let me uh, shout out joe uh who's in the chat earlier she hit me with a message saying that youtube is kind of messing with the numbers on some people's devices it says two people are listening some it says eight for me it says 12. Uh, so shout out to Joe. I got your message. I'm just re replying here, right? Um, thanks, Bukhari, for that. Uh, let me hear from Oni next. Oni, what's to you? Yeah, uh, black power. That's it. Just black power. You know, anything about black people coming together is just good damn news. Um, brother, brother was speaking, right? You know, he's speaking proper. Um, I know black folk, I mean, the trouble right now that we see is that there's this institution called EcoWise. I was actually going to come on live and just be like, F EcoWise. But this institution called EcoWise. Uh, and, you know, that's the thing. We Five years ago, black folk was bigging up EcoWise. You know, black folk was bigging up EcoWise. EcoWise was supposed to be some economic, you know, cooperation in West Africa. Uh, for some reason, it has this institution called Ego Wise or some shit. I don't know, but basically, they use it. It's 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 now just being used as a military force to try to stop Africa from changing. You know, just the other day they had this. Uh, they found this. Uh, matter of fact, it might today. Some dude in Gabon was was like, "Oh, stuff is getting stuff is getting tight." So he there trying to leave the country. He got two suitcases filled with money. Okay? Two suitcases filled with money. He's just a senator. 
All right. How he have two suitcases filled with money. How much are these people stealing from French Africa? money? French money. I mean, I, I mean, it's money's money, you know. <laughs> you know? But I mean, yeah. But uh, he's like, it's not real money. It's French. I'm joking. I, I don't know. Uh, but I, I, yeah, yeah, French money, CFA, Franks, or whatever they call them, right? But he's he's uh he's walking out with this money, and they stop him. But it's like this is what these politicians were doing. This is what these politicians are up to, and they got to go. But we have eco wise, okay? We have. Eco-wise, which is basically Nigeria, basically uh, Senegal at this point, you know, a lot of these other countries. Apparently, Tinubu, the president of 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 uh, the guy who stole the recent election of of Nigeria, where people was beating up people, um, stealing ballots literally on camera, beating up uh, posters and all that kind of stuff. That guy became the president, and now he's trying to run up on Niger. Uh, because of uh, of 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 uh, because of the coup, you know. Whereas he literally had people beating up people who would try to vote him uh, vote for his opposition, you know. And if you look at what Ecowas looks like, bunch of white folk. These like you have the real Africans, like Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger, and then you have the puppets. And 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 like I said, the people. Some people are prompting up these puppets, and I, and I would just say that yeah, I mean the, the the real Africans, it's always black power, it's always black love, right? The puppets, I I I hope they whoop them puppets, and then the puppets get what's coming. You know, I hope they don't get to the airport stealing out that money. I hope that like 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 that boy was trying, he got arrested. Hopefully, you know something more. You know what I'm saying? And that's all I'm gonna say. Appreciate that, Oni. Well said. Uh, let's have from Black Steel. Black Steel will say it. Well, I mean, Pan Africanism or perish at this point, and I'm glad they're getting they're getting the uh, the memo. So they, I'm glad they understand this. This is a uh, good news. I like to see Black people organizing, you know, for their self defense. Black people are tired of the colonial relationship between Europe. We are not their children. We are not a cow. For them to just milk us until we have nothing. There's no reason that not, the uranium Niger is powering power plants in France, while only 11% of Niger has power on a regular basis. This is not a, a sustainable system. Um, white power in Africa has always rested on Africans' compliance. You know, the ability to use Africans against other Africans. The armies, there were white people weren't sending huge armies of other white people to conquer African nations. They were using African troops they conscripted to use against other African people. So we can see this now with ECOWAS. You know, they're getting ready to use um, this whatever military force that they have to bring Niger back into compliance. So all the other coups that have happened in African nations, it's only this one they feel the need to intervene in. What's going on in Sudan? We don't see, you know, any foreign military intervention in the Sudan. But yet Niger is is such a, a hot button issue. And it's because France is so dependent on their resources. France is not willing to let them go. France has always try to keep a stranglehold on their colonies. They didn't want to let Vietnam go. They had they 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 wanted to get a nuke nuclear weapon to drop on a on a Hanoi. It was so bad. So we can see the same pattern that the French don't want to let these African countries go. And it's traitorous that these other Africans are trying to force their own people into compliance because they benefit. So they're okay with the masses of people suffering. Um, so I'm going to quote a black person. What Kwame Ture said is that the African bourgeoisie is the most corrupt bourgeoisie in the world because they 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 go after you know luxury in the middle of mass suffering. So we can see these these rich and wealthy elites 
in these in Nigeria and these other countries willing to you know make sure their brothers and sisters in Niger suffer. The young people see this see this trend for what it is and they're tired of it. They're tired of having their dreams crushed and their resources stolen and being forced to live in poverty. So I support this. I definitely hope you know more uh, more other I'm sorry other countries join up because there is strength and unity. And I think that we need to understand this. And I do believe that they will overcome and they will uh, secure their freedom. I'll leave it there. Thank you. Appreciate it, Kyle. Trigger Happy 262 in the, uh, in the chat says, Ibrahim and Goida so far looking good. Don't know much about the Niger leader, but hopefully they overcome this potential invasion and we know more about them. Uh, let's welcome in uh, Confidence this week. Confidence, how are you? I'm doing all right. I'm excited. This has been <laughs> it's a lot going on, but uh, this is, this has been, a, I see the topic, uh, it's been bubbling. It's not only these two countries. At different times, I've seen headlines of Chad wanting to join a federation. I've seen um, <clears throat> Guinea. Of course, Guinea wanted to be part of the federation, and they said they're going to probably uh, build a, a railroad to connect the three countries, Bali, Burkina, and Guinea. But... Uh, I ta I've talked to some of the, there's an activist named Suleiman Jules Diallo, but they have marches in like Senegal and th those that range of countries to basically break the Berlin Conference. Uh, they hand out uh, to the military leaders the, the book of a check on to job, the cultural basis of a black federated state. So the, the, they they're, they're know what they're doing. It's <laughs> they're doing what everybody says they should be doing, but it's in French. So a lot of people over here, the the black media capital of the world, they don't know what's going on, or they're just catching up to it. But this what what a lot of Pan Africanism has been is a lot of puppet leaders, it's like giving black Americans deals, uh, but behind the doors they're sabotaging the, the masses of the people. Like there's, they'll say, "Come here, DNA test. Here's land." But you see, when it's time to make a federation or really unite, and uh, we see a lot of people <laughs> turning their heads and say, "What are you doing?" Because Nigeria is not a French-controlled country; they're not a francophone country. So why are they interfering in Niger right now? It's uh, <clears throat> a lot of it. I see is a. Uh, I don't know. I see Mali. Uh, a lot of people don't know it, but Mali is actually an ethnic group. Too, so it's like what the one tribe that used to have, you know, an empire and they had a tribal identity at one time. So they've always kept that in mind and trying to form federations across West Africa. Uh, they try to form a federation with Senegal, I think, at one point, or the Sudanese Republic, the Bali Federation. Uh, they try to form, they were part of Nkuma's Union of African States that fell apart. I think Liberia was part of it at one time. And now they're doing this, <laughs> and it's succeeding because partly because of a uh, social media era. Era, the media, media, uh, er information travels faster, so they've always had that. And what they did now with the, taking over Niger, Niger, that they're playing on the ethnic group thing, where, like in Nigeria, if you attacked Niger, you're attacking the house of people. Uh, and so it's like it's it's, it's it's I'm sorry I'm outside. It's taking on an ethnic dimension where people are saying, "Wait, man, you declared war. You didn't consult us. Those are our brothers. If you do this, you're gonna fracture. You're like you're attacking our brothers. This part of Nigeria is gonna go this way. So morally, you know, they've already kind of broken Nigeria, and it's <laughs> it's like three months into the guy's presidency. I, I told a lot of activists you know, about the UNIA and breaking the Berlin conference. I invested over there. They took the money and they still voted. I told them these coops in West Africa, they're going to take effect and it's pointless to vote, but they're, they're seeing it in real time right now. They, morally, they kind of broke Nigeria. The fact that you could, it was it's basically one tribe saying they're going to attack, uh, <laughs> attack uh, Niger. And then the other tribe is saying, wait a minute, those are our people. And, I don't know. I don't know. I, they, they, already, they, they already pulled back. 
of their war declaration. Then they start visiting the governor and saying, we can't do this. And, but now they're saying they're going to have a multi, uh, they're going to have a standby force made of people who aren't Nigerians and ECOWAS uh, is going to have to put together a force. But at first, Nigeria said they're going to, they're going to lead everything. But then the, then the people in Nigeria said, wait, we can't attack our brothers. So I don't know if it's going to go through. Uh, I think there was a press release that uh, ECOWAS is forming a standby force and ready to, to invade if dipl diplomacy falls apart. But uh, morally, it's already eroding the unity of Nigeria. And this is my last comment. Uh, Nigeria, a lot of people don't know, <clears throat> when you say democracy, you know, they, they say Nigeria is based on three tribes. They call it Wazobia, so the majority tribes with the majority vote wins and they should rotate the presidency between the Yoruba, the House, and the Igbo. And those, they said this was the Igbo's turn and they didn't win it. So they're disgruntled about that. But uh, yeah, right now the House of People, I uh, just saw them. Uh, it, it's like they, they feel like a uh, war was declared on them and they don't have really anything to gain in Nigeria. And some of the secessionist leaders from House of Land are now talking. <laughs> talking bold like we're out so we'll see it's just a lot of uh, you know niger knew what they're doing and all these dynamics before they 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 made their move so uh, to me it looks like it's well played it, and if they invade they're kind of proving the point of the people in nigeria who don't want to stay so it's 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 interesting i'm just watching everything play out so i'll, st I'll just stand by but I, I, to the topic, yeah, I think we'll see a federation, but they kind of have to empower the grassroots, like grassroots communal voices and government, and the military should be based off what the people say. So th that's my point. Uh, I hope they can, uh, I think they should have one identity, uh, cultural identity or co uh, nationality, but we'll see how it goes. But uh, thanks for letting me speak. Yeah, thank, thank you for that. Yeah, conference, hang around for a minute. Uh, when I do the shout outs, I want you to talk about what you're doing and, and let people know how they can help. All right. So let's just, just stick around. We're going to end in a few minutes, but let's, uh, let's have from Buana. Yeah. Uh, for, for me, I think it's a mistake to tribalize that fight because the tri the fight that the, those West African countries are facing is an international one. So for an international problem, you must have an international solution. You know, if if I see there are several things that happen within that particular week, you know, of of those nations doing what they did uh, uh, in terms of coming together and standing up with one voice in America. In America, something historic happened as well. There there was a fight. Now this may seem trivial, but there were there was a fight that happened in Alabama that really carried like uh, news headings all over the world where black people got together and stand up against what was facing them. Now, some people may say that I was just in symbolic, but that really was a statement that resonated throughout the world in terms of African or black collectivity. You know, the, there was a 16 year old that jumped off a ship to enter the fight, say, man, I'm not gonna let my brother get beat up by a bunch of white boys. That's that's that symbolism, you know, resonated to the rest of the world, whether people believe it or not. And also the symbolism of what the uh, the West Africans did in West Africa. There is a unity. There is a unity that is a underlining thing that's happening throughout the world right now, particularly with West Africans, whether they are on the continent or in the Americas. I personally feel if I had Triores there. I would tell him not to tribalize what's going on, but internationalize it, internationalize it. You know, don't leave it to a tribal fight, turn it into a Pan-African fight. There are people in, in South Africa, like the EFF and the Zimbabweans, who would join that fight and struggle if a call was made, an international call was made. There are people from, from, from the, the Pan-African world in the Western world who would join that fight as well. You know, I, I think that they should internationalize that fight. See, the Muslims, whether we want to admit it or not, or the Ukrainians have shown us the way. ISIS and the Muslims say, listen, we are fighting 
a global enemy. Any Muslims who want to join this fight, you all are welcome to come to come join with us. The Ukrainians, when they were fighting against, when they fight against Russia, they they advocated for people who were living in other parts of the world to come and help join their fighting struggle. They internationalized the fight. Now the, the fight is a protracted one because so many people came to join that Ukrainian fight against Russia. Will they be successful? No one knows. But I would say that if I had priorities there, I would internationalize that fight because everyone is looking at this particular federation, understanding that the international enemy is the French. You know, if, if, if these countries would collectively come together and make a, a call, say people who are willing to, su to, to support this and help build Africa and take out these old colonial powers, there are many people who will be with that. I think that they should, they should international, even Nigerians, even some Nigerians would stand against the government of Nigeria. I beg to see. So I, I think that they should international, not only continent, continentalize it, but internationalize that Pan-African struggle because everyone knows we want the French out of the pink in Africa. It's been too long now. Too long now. You know, so I, I think that it, it, it is a mistake for them to, to keep that fight as just a tribal one. It's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. You know, we are necess we are fighting for the, this whole idea of this colonial structure that exists within the con our continent, our continent to be dispelled, to be done away with. And people are watching from the outside, just waiting for their time to come in. This is our power source. You know what I mean? So I, I think that it would be a mistake to, for them to just simply trivialize it because it's much more bigger than that. I think that they should internationalize it. But I, I would stop there. Uh, I don't, can I respond? I don't know. I don't understand what the brother means by tribalize it. But I check no, out because, the because because when you said because when you said you, you referred to um, in terms of the house. Hausa, the, the different tribes in, in northern Nigeria have been brother, brothers with, with people from the Niger. And I understand that there is a historical uh, uh, relationship that they had. But what I'm saying is what's going on in West Africa is bigger than just that. You understand? Because people are standing from the outside looking in. So they might not I may not necessarily identify with the, the tribal group, but I identify with the black men who look just like me. And, and, I, and I identify with the fact that these enemies have exploited both tribal groups, regardless of the fact that they, they have their different tribal groups going on or whatever. They're exploiting all of us collectively. So I'm saying that it is an international, it's an international enemy. So we, and it's an international problem. It's bigger than just the two small tribal groups. I'm thinking this should be an international solution to the problem. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I, well... That's why I reference uh, Sheikh Anti Jop, who he really explains it in his book. He called it cultural group, the cultural basis of you know forming a federation. And that's what they're using in Mali and Burkina Faso and Guinea. The activists are using that book as the basis. And you know when you kind of call it tribe, it's kind of demeaning. But you when you talk to the people, they have their cultural ways of government and re resolving resolutions, forming a military. You have to consult the people on the ground. And that's how they've, they've gone so far with Guinea, Burkina Faso, and Mali. They've, they've voiced that they want to form a federation. Now, Niger hasn't, but I was just referring to the dynamics of why they didn't uh, move into war in Nigeria. So, you know, you have to consult the people and you have to respect that they have a culture, they have an identity, civilization, and it's, it's, it's good to just talk to people directly find ways to reach out and talk to them and understand different cultures but when you call them tribes it's kind of demeaning uh, everybody has a culture I, well I can't all meet uh, together and they, they're all, their motto is like blow the Berlin conferences like when the Ber you talk about the Berlin conference it wasn't every black country of the world black people were defeated by 13 black white countries and kingdoms coming together we can't we haven't even Managed to do that to get uh, thirteen of our cultures to come together. Yeah, yeah but confidence, say, <laughs> say. confidence, confidence. Yeah. You may say, and I, I apologize for using the word tribe, but if you may say 
that my words are the meaning. But what I'm saying to you is the actions of the French are much more demeaning than I ever could use the word try, brother. You know, the, the actions of the French is not, is not specific to those areas, brother. It spreads across many parts of Africa. So I'm saying that if their tentacles are everywhere, the, the fight is an international one. It's not specifically, specifically based on those specific areas. It goes beyond the borders of Mali and, and Burkina Faso and, and the Congo and all those other places. It extends to Haiti as well. So I'm saying if it's an international problem, it must be an international solution. I think, uh, well, I don't know. Is so the, I don't know if the, maybe the topic should be who would who would support the, or join that federation. But that's I think that's the reason why we haven't had a federation so far. That a lot of a lot of times in this uh, Pan African movement, especially in Africa, people still hide their ethnic agendas in Pan Africanism. So these guys are saying, let's all come to the table. And so far, <laughs> no, not a lot of people have joined them. Uh, across Africa, but the diasporas now they're catching on. Now that Niger and Nigeria have uh, come into the question, but they've been mobilizing. And some Pan Africanists, not going to mention names, are still questioning these guys and saying, "Are you working for France or this and that?" Because a lot of people have been, a lot of Pan Africanists have business deals with Ecowas uh, states, and they've been they've been corrupt, but. Now they, they don't. A lot of Pan Africanists, if you prominent Pan Africanists, are not talking about this. <laughs> but uh, it's because they they're doing business deals with those same countries. So everybody's had a, a chance to promote this, but I think there's a lot of uh, duplicity that's already going on across the continent. Uh, I don't see any leaders in East Africa or South Africa supporting any of these coup leaders. So uh, I mean, I think that's pretty universal. They're pretty isolated. But the diaspora, maybe they'll, they'll help change that. But it's they're pretty much on their own. They've been on their own for a while. So, well, that's the that's the last topic for tonight. Uh, good conversation. Again, we could always continue these conversations. In fact, we could continue them in the comment section after the episode is posted, or we could continue them in the Discord. You guys could join the Discord. Use the link in the description. Um, I want to uh, get to some shout outs before we leave. So, so only what, what do you want to shout out this week? Uh, I, I ain't got no shout outs. I'm just gonna, um, you know how it is. We're gonna we're gonna be here tomorrow. Uh, we still reading through that socialist rag, and no, I'm joking. That rag. <laughs> uh, no, we still reading. Uh, uh, how Europe want to develop uh, Africa. I'm thinking I'm going to... Well, there's an anarchy book I'm interested in. I'm thinking maybe I might do some more writing, um, but maybe not even save it. You know, just like write and just share that experience. But other than that, uh, you know, appreciate you for having us. Appreciate you having me. Um, and peace, everybody. Thank you for coming through, Oni. Uh, make sure you guys check out Oni tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Black Steel, what do you want to shout out, comrade? <laughs> well, I just want to say this was an excellent show as usual. Lots of good topics discussed, lots of good uh, opinions and, and viewpoints. And uh, thank you for, for setting this up, Coco. You know, I don't know if we give you your props enough, man. You know, you, you really put in the work and it's greatly appreciated. So I want to shout you out. Uh, much, much appreciated. Black Steel, much appreciated. Uh, Buana, what you want to shout out this week? And no, shout out to everyone who contributed tonight. You know, I really had a good discussion um, of diversity of opinion. And and I just hope that, you know, I hope the best for, for oh, by the way, you know, happy Gavi Day. You know, Gavi Day passed without us celebrating that. We, we should have something to say about that. So happy Gavi Day to everyone. And I, like I said, I appreciate the show, Koku. You know, you know what it is, and I appreciate all the comments from the brothers tonight. Yeah, I appreciate you as well, Boyle. You know, uh, shout out to Gavi there, and also shout out to the you know a couple of episodes back. We I completely missed it, but we had our second. Uh, we, we 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 completed two years of doing shooting debris, so uh, shout out to that as well. Uh, conference, I left you for last because I want you to 
briefly um, describe what it is that you do, uh, what you're trying to do, and how people can reach out to you. And you and I, behind the scenes, we should have a, we should set up an interview where we could process through all these different things that you're trying to do. But go ahead and give your shout out. Uh, shout out to you for doing what you do. Uh, my uh, phone is at one percent. I just came back from Garvey Day, but uh, well, we, we're trying to get a Garveyites based uh, Caribbean association down here in uh, Jacksonville. So all these Caribbean groups, we think they should come under Garveyism, and then we could add black black nationalists from USA and Africa together. And we think that was Garvey's formula. So we just uh. I'm not I'm not driving, so it's hard for me to get around, but I visited the Gullah Geechee ceremony in Brunswick. I visited the Garvey Day celebration, celebration the Nation of Islam. So I'm building a network here of people who are like-minded, and we think we should just stop having these uh, cultural associations and uh, nationality associations if we're not going to have them under Garveyism, and we think that's the formula to build a mass movement trying to get the church on board at lastly so uh that's why i'm coming back from but uh i will stay in touch i'm trying to get my new contacts to produce content maybe zoom and have it part of the kwaz network and then start to join the streams when they can whereas we grow but i've had people uh, record zoom before so hopefully that be can be on the on the network and we have more people because everybody's always busy we don't have an economic strategy yet to free our time up, but uh, I'm still <clears throat> working, and uh, I think we, we're going to be growing because I think uh, everybody knows what's going on in Africa now. They're they're energized, so yep. So thank you, thank you for everything you guys do. I appreciate that uh, conference. I'm going to send you a message. Let's set up a structured, you know, like interview conversation about what you're doing. And we can make that a, a thing that folks could become more aware of. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, on my phone, I died. But Ugandan kings that visited Jamaica tried to declare it. They did a ritual to declare it a maroon or a, a black kingdom. I got them in the network, too. They're trying to do gold business. But they are they need to be tied to America. And people need to know what they're doing. And they, they got connections all over after. Uh, and they're down with everything. <laughs> So they, they right. need a wolf. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, in the chat, the matron says that Clemson Brown, the documentarian, joined the ancestral realm. So RIP to Clemson Brown. Uh, uh, well, with that, I guess we, I got everyone with the shout out. So you know the deal. I'll be back next week. You might see me pop up during the week. We'll see. I've been kind of busy as of late. I um, want to thank everyone who was here from Trigger Happy 262, The Matron, Daily Affirmation by Pauline, Joe, Nell was here, Sister Raw was here, KW Dawn 7, uh, KW Dawn 7, uh, McGee was here, uh, Marcus McGee was here, uh, and if I missed anybody, they were here earlier. I think Keto was here as well. If I missed anyone, shout out to Lero. Uh, you know, shout out to everyone who was on the panel. Black Steel, Oni from the Pro Black Perspective, Confidence, Buana, Bakari was here as well. Um, you know, I, 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 and Kevin Kari. I'll see you guys next week this time, 8, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And hopefully we'll have a great experience then too. Until then, you guys be good. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Bitter Medicine Podcast with your host, Koku. If you like what you just heard, we hope you pass along our web address, bittermedicineblogs.com, to your friends and colleagues, and share our show to all your social media. Be sure to check out our archive section on our website for previous podcasts. This has been a KWAZ radio production. Join us next time for another session of the Bitter Medicine Podcast. Follow us on Facebook at Bitter Medicine Show, Twitter, Bitter Meds, Tumblr, Bitter Meds, Instagram, Bitter Medicine.